year and the landscape of content creation is always changing. So I wanna to talk to you guys about what worked last year, what didn't work last year, what is going from 2022 into 2023, and then some content predictions for the remainder of the year. So one of the biggest things that I think worked for vast majority of brands and content creators last year is short form video. Whether you love it or hate it, it did work really well. And if you guys stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about my 2023 predictions for where short form video is going. So with the rise of TikTok over the pandemic and the introduction of Instagram Reels, we've seen such an uptick in short video content. Now, video has always been crowned king, but this version of short form content is so important for business owners and content creators to lean into because that's just where the attention is right now. And as our attention spans get shorter and people continue to flood TikTok, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Instagram Reels, this is what the audience and potentially your followers, this is what they're requesting. Long gone are the days of finding somebody's blog post and reading it in its entirety. They would rather have a synopsis in a short form video. It's just the nature of how things are right now. So whether you're leaning into original content, similar to what you see here, like a talking head video, or you're leaning into trends or somewhere in between, by jumping on this short form video wave, it's not only going to enhance your connection with your community, and with your audience, but it honestly is the best way to grow your audience right now. And with all the updates on Instagram and TikTok, it almost felt like it was the only way to grow last year. Another thing that we saw last year, and this has been happening over time on social media, but we really saw a heavy presence of brand personification. And simply put, it's just the humanizing of these brands. And we've seen this in a few different ways. We've seen the Duolingo mascot, brands hiring a face or hired talent to create all of their video content, and even leaning into using the text to speech feature when putting captions and text on TikTok. But I think the important thing to note here is injecting personality into your social media presence, even if you are a brand or a business. This goes back to marketing 101 and a bit of psychology that people want to buy from people. They buy because of the story and who that brand is and what they stand for or vice versa. They won't purchase because of those things. It's very rare that somebody can be like, hey, buy this product from me. They'll give you some benefits and features and you're just going to buy it right Right off the bat. Most of the time you want to get to know that brand, get to know the person behind that brand. So this brand personification is super, super important. And I foresee this being a thing that was not only popular last year, but we're going to continue to see the rise of it next year. And one example is, I don't know about you, but lately a lot of the influencers that I see pop up on TikTok or Instagram and they're creating paid posts, they're almost making it look not like an ad, they're adding comedy and their personality. They're almost kind of making fun of ads right now. And I think it's a brilliant strategy to, again, inject that personality, inject that humanity into marketing. So certain things that I think are gonna transfer from 2022 into 2023, and we'll continue to see them throughout the year. Number one, trends. I really don't think this is going anywhere. Personally, there are certain trends that I can't stand, and there's certain trends that I absolutely love. Whether you're jumping on a trending sound or a trending audio, or you are somebody who really does like to dance or act in your videos. These are here to stay. I do wanna give one caveat. I don't think this is an ideal strategy to have if you're just posting trends. People are really going to not engage with you as a community member. You still need to have original content, but I don't think it's a bad thing to have trends within your content ecosystem. Right now, I produce about 30% of my content are trends, and what I consider trends, again, jumping on a trending audio where I may be lip syncing to it, I will use a trend trending sound with text on the screen, or I might create in the moment memes, talk about pop culture, things like that. So jumping on these trending items will help kind of connect with your audience. They're going to find some relatability. It is also going to introduce you to new audience members potentially, but it isn't a concrete content strategy. People are wanting to see an uptick of original content. You telling your story, you talking to the camera to really connect with you on a deeper level and get to know you. And that's really hard to do through trends. But what I think we're going to continue to see are going to be the comedic trends, the trends that you can turn into maybe an educational piece, give a controversial opinion, a statement, something like that. I don't think those are going to go anywhere. And here's one quick pro tip. I have seen such an uptick in people creating original audios and having those go viral. So for instance, you can create an original audio of you just saying something, a profound quote, a, hey, check out X, Y, and Z, and have that start to go viral over on Instagram and TikTok, but TikTok's a little bit harder. I'm to play around with this a lot in the new year of creating my own original audios and encouraging people as my call to action to use it for their own business and use it 
in their own content. And the other thing that we are going to continue to see into next year, it's honestly never left, and that's storytelling. But again, this kind of comes in waves. Storytelling never goes away in marketing. It's just we see it in different fashions and functions. Storytelling is going to be so important for your business. Again, people want to buy from people, and you need to recognize that you telling stories is the best way to convert your audience members into paying customers. You can't simply just put up a testimonial and hope people buy. You want to tell the story of taking a client through a transformation, how somebody felt before buying from you, how somebody felt after buying from you. What's that transformation? Talk about something that's really going to not only pull at pain points with your potential ideal customer, but also kind of play into their emotions. They get to know you. It's not just buy this from me to get X result. And this kind of content will always stand the test of time. The format might just look a little different. So to give you a quick example, this year we saw the rise in people doing like the green screen effect. So they'll put something in the background. Typically it's an article, a case study. They're showing off their customers, testimonials, reviews, something like that. But why this is powerful is because people get some kind of visual aid while you're telling the story. It keeps the audience engaged on what you're talking about, but also provides some visual interest versus me just sitting here talking to the camera. That's a trend we started to see last year and I can see that continuing into next year. Versus something like when I was a wedding photographer four or five years back, I would just tell a story by posting a carousel of the entire wedding day and I would tell a story in the caption. That doesn't work anymore. That's not as powerful. While the storytelling aspect is still there in both of those pieces of content, people are wanting to get the stories in a new format now. And moving into things that quite didn't work last year. This is not only something that I saw across the board, but also just kind of my personal preference. We are starting to see the downfall of the photo only feeds and the perfect curation of what your profile looks like. I think this is due to the nature of TikTok and it's also just due to kind of our feeling as humans and constantly being sold to and this idea of perfection, but I'm here for it. Even I have let go of the idea of having this perfect Instagram feed. Like I used to always make sure that I had a perfect graphic that I created in Canva for every single carousel and I made sure that every real cover was designed with my branding and now I'm like it's fun I'll get around to it don't get me wrong but now I'm just like let me just create something in Instagram or just use a screenshot from the video and I think this is happening for quite a few different reasons number one we're just over it people and business owners and content creators we're sick of having to live up to that perfection it takes a lot of extra time and effort energy and sometimes money and our audience is also sick of seeing it because it seems like this thing that's just unattainable it's not relatable people don't connect with it. And it's just kind of the nature of social media. These things just come and go in waves. When we had MySpace, we had to make sure we had the perfect song and the perfect background, and we all knew how to HTML code. And then they introduced something like Facebook where it's super clean and you only add pictures and you don't really have that top eight anymore. We're gonna go in between these cycles of perfection and simplicity. And I think we're moving into something that I like to call the simplistic chaos, where we're just gonna simplify and throw something out there and who cares what it looks like. As long as you're relating to your audience and connecting with them, they're not gonna care if your hair is done, if your makeup is done, if you have the perfect cover photo, or you have that perfectly edited photo in your feed. We've seen this through the introduction of new apps like Be Real, where things are just posted in the moment. And with the rise of photo dumps again from Gen Z, where you're just dumping a bunch of photos from your month, your day, your week over on Instagram as a carousel. So the idea of these photo only feeds and this perfection really is starting to decline. And this one's from personal experience. This is something that did not work for me this year. And that really comes into paid promotional content. So I've been working with brands for a couple of years now through affiliate marketing, paid promotions, UGC content, things like that. And something that worked for me in previous years, so in 2021, really did not work well for me in 2022. I used to be able to go on TikTok, start my videos in a talking head fashion similar to this, and be like, hey, here's three reasons on X, Y, and Z. Then I could give a tutorial and plug the brand that I'm working with throughout the video or at the end with a call to action. I'd be able to provide that value while also kind of talking about the benefits and features of a certain product that I was paid to promote or that I just like to promote. Those types of talking head tutorial videos did not perform well for me across the board when I was doing paid collaborations this year. And they only worked well if brands decided to boost it on the back end and put in some more money into the ad space of it. People are sick of just seeing like things and products thrown in their face. So last year, that kind of stuff just didn't work really well. Moving into next year, and again, I'm still kind of playing around with this, I think paid promotional content is gonna require a trend or something a little bit catchier, or you're gonna want to introduce some comedy or entertainment. Otherwise, people know that they're being 
being sold to. They don't want to watch it all the way through, even if it addresses their pain point. It's going to be really interesting to see how influencers put a spin on this for next year. And while I don't consider myself an influencer, I do like to create content in collaboration with other brands. I'm having to rethink my entire strategy and structure when it comes to working with these brands. So let's say you kind of struggled with the content creation and strategy side of this last year, and you want a little bit more help. Quick plug, I am accepting applications into my VIP day experience, the content plan, where we will combine strategy and workflow to create a content ecosystem that works for your business and makes it easier for you to create content, strategically, of course. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, my 2023 content predictions. This is just based on what I've kind of seen throughout the last year and what I anticipate moving forward after just like talking to colleagues and seeing kind of their trends and analysis as well. Short form video is not going anywhere, but I think we are going to see a shift in how it is created. And personally, I think there's no more room for middle of the road content. Now, before you go crazy, let me tell you what I mean. What we're starting to see, our audience is wanting to engage with content that is either you in your pajamas, hair a mess, like not done up, that really raw in the moment content, or they are wanting to see that highly produced, bust out your camera, bring out the lighting, do hair and makeup, they're wanting to see that content. I think there is this gap in the middle of the middle of the road content that I used to be able to do. I would just put up my iPhone. I might have a little hair and makeup done, but I could just talk to the camera. I don't don't think that works anymore. People want raw and real or they want highly produced. And I can see that being the trend in 2023. And this isn't the only thing I see when it comes to short form video content, when I mean middle of the road content. You can also think about this in terms of the duration of your content. This is just something that I've observed in my own content, looking at analytics, what I've observed in the entire marketplace right now. People are wanting to see either very, very short form content, engaging, super quick, 10 to 15 seconds or less if you can, or they're wanting to watch longer short form content. TikTok introduced the three minute video and on Reels you can do 90 seconds now. People are wanting to see you do storytelling and really engage them for that full time now. So again, there's a middle chunk missing from maybe that 15 second mark to that two minute mark that people really aren't engaging with that form of content. I think what we're going to see in this next year, short form content isn't going anywhere. We're just gonna have to think of it as raw and real or highly produced. And along with that, I think we're going to see a shift in platforms, like overall social media platforms. Most of us know we've already seen a decrease in engagement on both Instagram and TikTok. And just in my little social sphere of marketers, we're starting to see businesses move to LinkedIn and content creators move to YouTube. Now, again, this comes in cycles and waves, but right now people are really looking for new avenues of consuming content. A lot of us can't stand the riffraff over on Instagram and not everybody is really enjoying TikTok as much as they did during the pandemic. So they're looking for new avenues to consume content and you are gonna want to figure out, does my ideal customer want to go to those platforms and consume content from me there? So for me, I'm getting back on YouTube because a lot of my audience has come to me and they're saying, I want that longer form content. Don't get me wrong, I love your TikToks, your tips and your tricks and things like that, but it's so much easier to actually learn and digest the information when I do a piece of long form content like this. I can't give away all these juicy little nuggets in a 15 second TikTok video. In my case here, I'm going to have a focus on this long form content and rip pieces from it to then post on other channels, on other platforms and get the short form content out that way, rather than trying to put out all this short form content, this short form original content, jumping on too many trends, sitting down and trying to record videos and come up with new ideas. I'm not willing to create that content anymore. And along with that, I think we're going to see this rise in long form content. Now, it is always a good idea to have long form content in your business and in your content ecosystem, whether that's a newsletter, a podcast, a blog. This is just good to have to make sure you're not putting all your eggs in one basket and to leverage things like SEO and building a community and an email newsletter and things like that. But I think long form content is going to become prevalent again. Just the way the world works now, people are starting to go back to work. They're having longer commutes. They're going to want to listen to those podcasts. They're going to have those YouTube videos on the side during lunch, maybe when their boss isn't looking. And we're starting to see people getting kind of sick of scrolling on TikTok for endless hours and just not being able to consume content in the way that they used to. People are wanting to engage with you in this long form content and learn more about you, dive deeper into topics, learn more about you as a person, a business owner, a content creator. So if you want to learn more on how to lock down your content creation strategy, I have this video for you. Content creation for business owners and content creators isn't going anywhere. It's just a matter of how you approach it. So 
together in this video, we're gonna figure out which content creation method works best for you. And as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will see you guys next week. Don't forget to hit subscribe.